because even though it's we've had record high temperatures, um, we also had a lot of snow this summer or this winter, and um, it hasn't melted off on that uh, east side of Temp, northeast side of Temp all the way. So, so we went up. We took uh, some pullover crampons and some ice axes, and Friday uh, the conditions weren't great, and we actually helped a few college kids decide not to cross. Um, some of the lower snow fields because they were pretty dangerous um, And that's a lot of what we do is we have people at the trailheads that kind of tell everyone the conditions and we just kind of help people know what they would need to get all the way up and uh, We had the equipment and we got up okay and we spent the night and then Saturday we hung out at Emerald Lake and someone up in Summited and came down uh, We did have the, the classic freak hell and rainstorm for about an hour about midday around 2.30 um, and then we decided to head down. We didn't feel like it was there were enough people up there this time of year that we needed to stay till Sunday. So uh, we started heading down around five, and we came to the uh, to the most treacherous and steepest snowfield that we had crossed coming up the day previous. Um, we were measuring it with a slope meter, and it was about forty degree slope um, of snow and ice. Um, and making my way across that. I was the third person to go. Um, someone on our team had actually gone before me and had lost control of their ice axe, um, but they were able to still self-arrest and stop themselves. So we knew it was kind of treacherous and I started making my way across and um, I ended up slipping as well. Um, but I slid about a thousand or about a hundred yards um, over the snow field and ended up going over a, a 30 to 40 um, foot waterfall cliff. Um, and ended up the snow fields come up and then the waterfalls eat out the snow fields and kind of make these crevasses over the cliffs So I ended up falling in between the, the snow field and the cliff and down in kind of a crevasse um, And it was kind of one of those situations where you know, I was going across with my ice axe I slipped You know, I started self-arresting and we had trained um, or we had Yeah, we'd received a training a couple months before on self-arresting with ice axes, um, but with my heavy pack and the slick snow and the slope, I just couldn't hold it. So ice axe got ripped out, I started getting out of control, and I started realizing that I was in trouble. Um, and then once I started tumbling off that waterfall, that was kind of that moment that hit me like, you know, this is how people die mountaineering. Like this is how, you know, these are those stories you hear about where it gets out of control. Um, I got really lucky. I'm, as far as I can tell, I must have broken my legs on one of the tiers of that waterfall and then tumbled and landed on my backpack in the rocks in the stream below in the crevasse. Um, and that's what saved me and saved me from having more injuries than just, you know, my legs and down was that I was able to land on my big backpack that had a sleeping bag and everything in it. Um, so it kind of took me a minute to gather every. <laughs> all my emotions and the pain and everything, but um, after that point, I just kind of started making checkpoints for myself. So I kind of just started assessing myself. You know, I knew I was in a glacial stream and I would go through hypothermia. I could tell both my legs were broken. So I did what I could to open my pack and get a pad under me and get a jacket on me. Um, I knew my friends were up above and luckily for that weekend, we had two a EMTs and a PA um, and another a uh, turt volunteer who had, has done some stuff with the army and humanitarian work and we were all ham radio certified which is how we got a hold of search and rescue. Um, so I heard my friend call down eventually about after 15 minutes of me trying to you know do what I could to take care of myself and I tried to yell to him that you know both my legs are broken because I just wanted like my next checkpoint in my mind was activate search and rescue you know so I just wanted him to know like I'm definitely hurt we need to activate that. Um, and he heard me and he said understood and that was a big a big relief I guess that I just like one more checkpoint so my next checkpoint was seeing my turt volunteer buddies coming down through the crevice they made their way down um, I only had to be down there for maybe 20 minutes on my own which was which was good um, once they all got down there they helped stabilize me a little bit um, I had kept my broken legs in the stream because I felt like the cold water was better for them than anything else, and I couldn't move very well anyways. Um, and yeah, they did a great job. Um, the AEMTs and the, and the PA 
took control immediately. They started splinting my legs. Um, we had a choice whether to try and carry me 30 feet toward the end of the crevasse or six feet kind of a little deeper, but maybe easier to get to with just four people. And that was the option we went with. So they, they took me about six feet behind me, wrapped me up, up in a burrito and all of our sleeping bags and everything. Um, and that's kind of how we went for four hours until search and rescue got there as we just kept me in a little burrito, tried to keep me warm. We used warm water bottles and, um, and they just kept assessing me over and over again to get vitals and uh, to make sure I hadn't hit my head or my spine or my, uh, or my hips.